Build shows on the road. Guess where we are? Bastrop, Texas, visiting my buddy Scott True. Scott's got some really good details. We've been to this house before, but Scott is just about complete with his exterior insulation. And on this video, we're gonna focus on Scott's really good exterior insulation details that I think are done on a really nice budget point. We got lots to learn from this wise builder. Let's get going. Scott, appreciate you having us, brother. Absolutely. Uh, we are, I don't know, like 80% done with your siding on this house. The back is still open. How about we give these guys a tour of what you've done for exterior insulation on Absolutely. what I would consider a very good budget. So let's start here. So the first off, when we were here last time, Scott, full zip system sheathing on the outside, which I use uh, on my house and I use on a lot of projects as well. But then what's the insulation and, and why am I seeing two layers on the back of the house compared to just one layer? Well, you know, uh, there is a little bit of shrinkage with poly ISO over time. Weather uh, will affect that. Um, we probably don't have as much risk in this climate right. as some others. It's not as cold here. Yeah, staggering the seams, you know, helps control that uh, continuous insulation and keeping sense. consistent. So we're one inch here, one inch here. That's Do you right. know what the R value of one inch is? On six. This? So, our, so we got an so, R12. Yeah, six. So, so R12, um, they, ha they do have what they call the long-term R value, which is slightly less than that. Yeah, it's um, like 5.7 or something. Right, exactly. <laughs> um, and then uh, I like it in the south because we got a foil face here. We got a lot of direct sun. Heat is more of a concern for us, frankly, than cold. So we're gonna get that radiant barrier effect on the outside of the house. It's gonna help repel the sun's radiant energy from the house. Now, Scott, I'm seeing a bunch of black dots around <laughs> the, uh, the zip. What do we got going on here? So this is something I tried. Um, so really, it was recommended to me by Joe Stebrick directly. I talked to him at the Builder Show in Vegas. So he recommended that I use the textured house wrap. Okay, so you and, get a little sample of that right here. Right. Looks like you were maybe doing a mock-up or thinking or, about doing that first. Exactly. Huh? Now, it, now, he gave me a few different suggestions, but he said that that would be the easiest. I and, you know, when it came down to it, I don't actually think it's the easiest because, <laughs> you know, house wrap is kind of a pain. It's blown around in the wind. Yeah. And, and uh, frankly, it's not inexpensive. And, and right. what's, what's the purpose of this or the dots? What are we trying to accomplish here? We're trying to create just a little bit of space behind that insulation so that if water were to ever get beyond everything, mm -hmm. that we've got a little bit of space for it to drain out. Like a drainage plane. It's a drainage yeah. plane. Yeah. So in this case, we have two drainage planes because the other one is on the outside of the insulation. Yep. I uh, did a video just now, recently with my buddy Wade Paquin up in Rhode Island where he had a textured house wrap and he was putting boral uh, siding right on top of it. And we thought, well, let's test it. And we, we put a piece of uh, that right up against the WRB, poured water back mm -hmm. there. And sure enough, that water drained right out, even though it looked like there wasn't much space at all. Mm -hmm. So I like this idea, right. Scott. Uh, how, what is this product and how did you get this what, texture to it? Uh, this is just a silicone, that's all that is. Okay, just because, a cheap silicone. Because product. it's not serving any purpose other than just bumping. It's a spacer. Exactly. Yeah. And then I just had uh, somebody use a, a, a notched trowel to knock it down to try Super to make smart. sure that they were all consistent. Um, and, and so, so you've got that kind of intermittently spaced yeah. on maybe one foot centers around the house. Yeah, and so we did that because we thought it would be easier. And mm -hmm. sure enough, it was. I mean, it took about an hour for a guy to go around with a ladder and do it all. It was pretty fast. Not bad at all. Um, yeah, I'm not. I'm not a hundred percent sure, to be honest, whether it's working or not. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's not bumping it out that far. Um, I I, did, I posted about this already, but um, but we're not really worried because in this climate, with the little imperfections, we've got some space behind yeah, you there. Got some texture regardless, right so we're in good shape regardless. You also have overhangs in this whole house. This is not a uh, you know modern no overhang house. I would say if right. you look at the exposure that's gonna decide the system. And on this house, your, your exposure is not that high. Mm -hmm. uh, although it is a one foot instead of a three foot or a two foot overhang. So there, there is some amount of water, let's say, that would get behind the light fixture. So I think this is a good inexpensive precaution. And it sure. certainly in the end will be less expensive uh, than using that textured house wrap on there. Uh, and then I'm noticing that on this insulation, you don't have a whole lot of fasteners there. No. Is that on purpose? Well, these fasteners really are just temporary. 
Right. Um, because in the end, when they go to put the furring strips on, that's the permanent thing that's that's holding the insulation on. Right. We're, so we're so using, these are holding it on. Exactly. We're using four inch uh, deck screws for this so that we go all the way through to the stud. That's nice. And dex, four inch deck screws, and, you can buy at any hardware store. Right. They're, they're kind of off the shelf, right? So yeah, so this is what's really holding the insulation on. Right now, you know, this is like kind of out, but yeah, once they get those strips on, it, it all gets tightened up. I like it. Talk to me about airflow. You've got this black piece down here. Uh, I'm assuming this is, uh, uh, coroplast or no? The coravent. Coravent, cor cor rather. Coravent. Which is like a, cor a corrugated plastic mm -hmm. and it's got the, the little felt um, on the bottom for a yep. bug screen. Yep. Um, so and I really like that. The cells are oriented up and down so air right, can exactly. flow back into this cavity. Right. Also notice that you've kept your uh, one by short of the sill so any water that gets down here can find its way out. Yeah, not only that, but I'm also thinking about the venting, the airflow coming through here so smart. that we're not like closing off a cavity here. Really smart. And then, so and then that- how about the top? How are you venting the top of that rain screen? So we built our overhangs slightly bigger. I'm using a 16 inch hardy perforated soffit. Okay. Uh, but we went 19 total inches when we built the overhang. Uh, so <laughs> that- smart. So, so that- you got two um, inches of foam. There's gonna be a little bit of gap yep. by the time when you put that hardy soffit on. So this gap will meet up with that gap and and everything is able to to vent out the soffit so when you look so when the soffit's on and you look up before the siding goes on you can see up in there which means then scott your conditioned attic there's no mm -hmm. venting in the attic you're venting out these enclosed soffit spaces which is really smart if there's any yep. condensation uh, if you had a roof leak or whatever now you've got a place for that to dry out exactly plus you don't have any uh kind of weird top of wall bug screen detail to try and vent your rain screen, just vent it right out of the soffit. That's really smart detail. Exactly. I like that a lot, Scott. Uh, hey, before we move on to the porch and look at some other details, what is going on here? This looks cool. <laughs> so this is just our out outdoor shower. Uh, we're we're going to have a pool here eventually. Okay. And so, so this is a place to, to shower off outside before you come in. That's right. I like it. What we've is got, the detail We've got the this? bathroom there as well. That's an outdoor bathroom. Oh, no way. Okay, so this is your toilet space. You got a full door and right. a full bathroom. So when we're having pool parties, um, we don't have people running into the house wet. I love it. <laughs> That's great, man. Um, well, walk yeah, me so, through the details. What'd you do here? Yeah, so this just really just started out as your standard drop that you would normally put in a uh, slab. Okay, so in other words, this slab here is, let's say, a two by four distance lower exactly. than the other slab when you poured it. So we built up that mud bed with the slope and then uh, obviously put the Schluter Curdy on as a membrane. Yep. And then what's your drain in the center there? This is the Flow FlowFX drain and that's compatible with Schluter products. They actually make a version of it that ah. drops right into the pre-sloped foam pans oh, as well. Really? Oh, cool. Um, so it's like the same shape, but I like these drains uh, because they perform really well in tests. Okay, cool. And then what's what's happening here as you come up to the wall? And I'm seeing this. What is this green membrane that's on here? Um, so this is actually hydro band. Mm. I guess you could say that this is belt and suspenders. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we took the curdy up the wall. I've used the curdy corners. So mm -hmm. I've done everything the way that Schluter specifies. And um, but I just you know when we do it, there may be a few imperfections uh, here and there. Um, and so this is just giving you a belt and suspenders, right? Really. Exactly. Yeah. That's just our standard practice that we'll just do a coat of that on top. I know that someone's going to comment on this video, <laughs> Scott. So let's go ahead and, uh, and just address right. it at a time. We've got two different manufacturers, uh, both good products. But technically, this install is not in the manual for either manufacturer. What do you say to that comment? Yes. Um, okay. I've mixed brands before. Um, and but the way I think of it, I, I have to do what I'm comfortable with and mm -hmm. what I feel good about, because in the end, I don't expect any company. Um, I know sure has they have a good warranty. No, for sure. I, absolutely. But when it comes down to a problem, I don't expect any company in particular to stand behind my product. Yep. So that's my job. That's what my job is. My job is to stand behind my product and, and I have to do what feels good to me. And if, if over redundancy is a part of that, then so be it. I love it, Scott. That's a great <laughs> answer. Let's go check out the back porch. And then uh, before too long too, I want to show these guys 
a different rain screen that you've got going on this uh, on this house. Uh, talk me through this window install and the um, the bump out because it looks like your foam is butting into maybe some zip tape. What are we seeing there? All right, so the window buck is at the same plane as the insulation. So the buck was completely taped before before we put the insulation on. Mm -hmm. We get the insulation on, and then we do a second layer of tape on the sill so that that sill is coming out to this plane here. Yep. And we've used the stretch tape on the corners, and then and then the insulation gets uh, taped also to the buck. Gotcha. Right. So we've got all that uh, tape going on at this layer, and then we add our furring strips after that. Got it. Uh, because I'm bumping the window out to the same level as the furry the, strips. So when well, your hardy comes on, it'll bump into the window frame as normal. Yeah, and the way that we're doing the trim is we're butting the trim up to the window. Okay. So, you know, we're bumping it out to make it work with how we're doing the trim. Hey Scott, what are the main reasons in your mind for using exterior insulation? Because I see you doing this on some builds like this one, but not always. Right, so for us, it really is a custom thing. Um, you know, in our spec homes, we're making the homes more affordable. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot that we can do without exterior insulation, like we yep. do the advanced framing, yeah. reduce that thermal bridging. Yep. Conditioned so, attic spaces. So when you're on a budget, this really is kind of a luxury de decision. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it is above and beyond. Mm -hmm. um, so really, there's several reasons why you might want to choose exterior insulation. Uh, first reason being what we all hear about is the thermal bridging. Right. Um, you have continuous insulation, you're, re you're massively reducing your thermal bridging. Mm -hmm. uh, aside from that, because that, it, it can't just be that, because that all by itself probably makes less of a difference than people realize. Uh, we've done some energy modeling to show that. Well, we're, I'm gonna show that in a future video. The second reason we like, you might choose exterior insulation is because it makes the interior insulation work a lot better. Mm -hmm. There is this thing called convective looping mm -hmm. that can happen inside the wall cavity. Yep. Now I've learned, I've learned this uh, through Christine Williams, actually has a really good video explaining this, gives all the details about how that works. Yep. Um, Building Science Fight Club on Instagram, by the way. Right. She's awesome. And then the third reason, now I've got these three reasons I got from her video. The third reason is condensation control, keeps mm -hmm. your sheathing warmer. That's right. Now, granted, I mean, these risks are pretty low in this climate. Right, but you get but a more northern climate where it gets colder out, that risk right. for condensation goes exactly. up. Exactly. Because in the winter time, if moisture is migrating through your wall somehow, whether it's airflow, lack of a vapor barrier, whatever, if it finds a cold condensing surface, that's where you can have condensation on the back of sheathing which means that bad things can happen, whether it's mold growth, it could even lead if in extreme cases to rot. So by having that exterior insulation, you're warming that sheathing in the winter time, mm -hmm. right? Is exactly. that right? Right. Yeah. And then the fourth reason is what I added, I'm sure you is probably maybe one of your favorites as well, but another benefit is that it's just much more forgiving. Yeah. Um, we're not having to babysit the framers all the time, making sure they're not putting stacking studs next to each other. Um, creating those thermal bridges. If a mistake happens, uh, you know, we change the size of some windows over there. Hmm. And instead of, build, you know, tearing everything apart, redoing the window with minimal thermal bridging, all we did was just add lumber in there. So you have a lot That's more forgive, forgiveness. And I'll that. add another one on my house. I put a bunch of Sono speakers in and it made sense in my living room, which was an exterior wall to recess some speakers, which means I had no room for insulation but I had two inches of outsolation, so mm -hmm. it wasn't a big deal. Yes, I had slightly less, but I had full depth, uh, you know, R11 or whatever on the outside of my house. It was no big deal to have to recess that. And on the rare occasion, you might have plumbing on an outside wall, same thing. Now you've got that plumbing in a warm space mm -hmm. with full blanket insulation on the outside. So there's a lot of benefits besides just the nerdy building science or the how long's the payback question, Right. which is a hard one because this is not a two year, three year payback, right? We're talking long term. We think about our houses lasting for decades. So this is gonna be something that's gonna pay for itself, but it's not gonna happen in the first couple of years. It's gonna take time to pay for itself. Um, Scott, let me ask you another question. Budget windows here, you know, these are a really 
uh, straightforward vinyl window product. Mm -hmm. What made you decide to do that, and what do you think about that from the perspective of, hey, I spent all this money on insulation, mm -hmm. but I used a more basic window? Okay, so we know these windows perform. We've talked about the air tightness before. We know we can get them airtight. Now, what we haven't talked about yet, I guess the thermal performance of them, mm -hmm. U-factor, yep. SHGC. So I have done energy modeling because this wasn't just, okay, we wanna save money, use the cheaper windows. Um, I don't make very many decisions like that. Most of the decisions I make are calculated yep. in some way. It's, you know, we're doing these things on purpose. Um, but what we found in the energy modeling is that if you have a fairly simple house with a, a pretty low uh, proportion of windows, bumping up to the next level of performance in a window is probably not going to make as big of a difference as you might think. Right. Um, now, on the other hand, if we're in Maine or we have bigger windows, more windows, exactly, it certainly can make a difference. The other thing I want to point out too, Scott, is for instance, right here, you've got a big porch. The roof's not on mm -hmm. yet, so it's right. sunny. <laughs> But when your metal roof porch gets on, it almost doesn't matter what your SHGC here is because they're in the shade all the time, right? And again, the same with goes with the rest of the house. You've got overhangs, we've got trees. So really the only downside of a more basic window is U-factor. And to go up to triple glaze is a pretty big price point jump from this right. window here. And I mean, not a, not a small jump at all. Yeah, so if you really, really if you have a, a pretty simple house with not a lot of windows, Bumping up to the next level of window, I, I almost view it as it's really a cosmetic decision because right. you will get a much nicer looking window, that's for sure. Um, so it really is a cosmetic decision at that point. Yep. Now, again, depending on the house, if you've got a wall of windows, um, it's not just cosmetic anymore. It's you, you have to worry about the performance yeah. if you've got exposed walls or a lot of windows. I love it, Scott. Love it. Hey, before we move on to another part of the house, I want to make mention of this over here, Scott. Um, you mentioned that the exterior insulation means that some details are, are easier, which on our last video, we showed how you're using these Arlington inboxes. You're cutting the flange off them, and now this is outside of your zip system. The only thing that penetrates uh, is the wire, so that's really sealed. But then I'm noticing you're taping that on top of your insulation. Mm -hmm. yep. Same with your pipes. What's, what's the reasoning behind those tapes? So this is just water management. Yep. Someone asked me the same, actually the guy that was doing it asked me the same question. <laughs> he said, um, you know, already sealed behind he it. He said, this isn't your air barrier. Why are we doing this? It's great that he asked it, that. Yeah, it shows that he was thinking. Yeah, that's um, right. But yeah, and he's right, it's not the air barrier, it's just managing water. Yeah, it's just that and if water were to get back here, we want it to flow out, so, so you're not taped here because you don't need it. Right, by the way, Arlington saw the video. Did they? And they sent me another style of box. I actually have it in the truck yeah, that we could that? show. That's so cool, that, the that build would work, show. <laughs> work for better for this situation. We'll, we'll see that in a minute, I love it. <laughs> hey, before we move on to the front of the house and another rain screen detail, I do want to, uh, ask you about on the last video we talked about that big bundle of wires sticking out right on the outside of your house and Scott said stay tuned Matt I have something for that walk us through that detail and we'll, and we'll lay some photos in it uh, that you gave me from the process okay so basically I did the one hole one wire method that you've shown on your channel you've done it I believe on your house yep, was, yep. your whole house was like that yeah um, so that was exactly what we did so you I, took we, the bundle of wires coming out right. and you took a, like a, looked like a 16 by 16 sheet of zip and said, okay, I've got, I don't know, let's call it 10 wires. You drilled 10 holes yeah. and then kind of use that as a template to slide the wires through that you were able to do rather than the electrician doing. So right. it made it a little more straightforward. Then it looked like you used liquid flash on all mm -hmm. those wires. Exactly. And taped that zip on the outside. Uh, so that now he kind of retrofitted the one hole per uh, per thing method that Jake Bruton came up with and along with Steve Basic years ago. Hmm. And then to make it simple though, then you necked it back down to have one bundle coming out. So when the electrician shows up again, he frankly doesn't know what's behind there, right? right? And sometimes that's better. Um, <laughs> I, I know what he wants to see when he shows up. He yeah. wants to see that connector there. Yeah. Uh, if I let him do that, 
he'll he'll poke that connector all the way through the wall. Right. right. Um, so I just set it up for him. That was really smart. <laughs> and it maybe wasn't quite as beautiful as you wanted, but I do want right. to point out that he's got a big electrical box covering that. Yeah. So maybe it wasn't as as uh, pretty from a craftsmanship perspective, uh, but he's got it all nice and cocked in with big stretch out there. The box that that has the meter and the outside panel goes over that. I think you're good uh, yeah. to go. Yeah, I will say that it was a little bit of a challenge. <laughs> That's okay. That's how you learn, though. That's right. Scott, you got a busy job site today. <laughs> I thought rather than yeah. filming on the front porch, we should come over here. Uh, talk to me about what this is that you're using on the front porch, which I've used a bunch. This is just a uh, coroplast strip. Mm -hmm. um, which is basically real estate sign material, right? Uh, yeah, basically. I buy mine yeah. at uh, Regal Plastics in Austin, but I'm sure there's dealers all over the country. I mean, you can get this at Home Depot. They okay, buy, you really? have sheets of it. Okay, great. I buy mine in four by eights. Mm -hmm. And what's cool about it is yep. you can get it in various thicknesses. Mm -hmm. uh, this looks like it's maybe 3 sixteenths ish Yeah, something like that. Which isn't quite as much as the back, which is 3 quarters. So talk me right. through the reasoning for that. Okay, so yeah. Really, you do want a bigger rain screen if you want all of the benefits of that rain screen. Mm -hmm. um, but a small rain screen will get you some drainage. Good drainage. Uh, area. And so Just that's- Just less airflow. Exactly, that's right. right. So that's really what we're accomplishing. The reason we go smaller sometimes is because it makes the, the trim details easier on the yeah, window. For sure. We don't have to buck the windows out or do anything special with that. Yep. So really, really that's that's what the decision is based on. It's, it's making the job easier. And again, anytime I can make the, the framers and the cornice guys job easier, yep. they're gonna give me better work. Yeah, I love it, love it. Now, Scott, we promised these guys we'd show them what uh, Arlington sent you in the mail. What do we got? Yeah, so <laughs> they actually saw the video and, um, and they, saw, they saw what we were doing with cutting the flanges off. <laughs> so they wanted me to see this product here where it's an adjustable flange. That's pretty cool. So and this is the this is the catalog number for it, and they call it the Inbox Vertical for Stucco Wall Systems, uh, with basically an adjustable flange. Or in yep. in your case, I think you could also throw the flange away if you didn't yeah. need it. Yeah, which you is could cool. you could either throw it away, or or use it. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, I, I like I like that they have something like this where it's adjustable you can find some other use cases for it. That's pretty cool. They made some neat products at Arlington. Hey, Scott, before we wrap the video, uh, one thing I noticed, and we flew the drone when we got here, and if you look at the drone footage, I do not see any plumbing pipes, uh, skylights, uh, you know, let's say dryer vents on your roof. Right. Is that just because you haven't put them there yet, or was that <laughs> on purpose? Of course, it's on purpose. <laughs> um, you know, it's, uh, I wanted to have no roof penetration. It's that. just better for durability. Yep. Also looks better. Yep. Yep. Better design. One less thing to possibly leak in the future. It, exactly. I mean, those are a little bit more difficult to air seal as well sometimes. Yeah. So, so as a result though, where did you uh, put all those vents? Well, you can see from here, actually, if you look up, all the plumbing vents are coming out. Uh, the little sidewall yeah. that's in between my two roofs. That's really smart, Scott. I like that a lot. Very smart, and they look taped and sealed. You can yep. also see from our last video that he has that kind of toothed uh, sheathing uh, that you cocked that uh, kind of Doug Cameron came up with that idea years ago mm -hmm. that I featured on the Build Show. Yep. I love that you took that idea, ran with it. Uh, and then what's our interior insulation in the attic to create that conditioned attic space? You're gonna use open cell spray foam up there? Yes. Yeah. I mean, that's a great detail to make sure that all of your ducts are inside the conditioned space. Mm -hmm. And yet what I love about you, Scott, is you're doing things that are really smart, but you always have the budget on mind. And, and you're not just going crazy on every detail you see on my show, let's say, that mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily work in Bass Drop, where you've got a budget, where you've got houses that uh, are in a certain neighborhood that's only going to sell for so much. Mm -hmm. uh, now, this happens to be Scott's personal house, so he's taking it a little step further. But what you're seeing is a really smart builder. Scott's learned really good building science from a lot of good people. We mentioned a bunch of them today. That's the same that I've done. And you put it together for a really well-built house. I'm really proud of you, Scott. Thank well you. Well done, Appreciate dude. So that. if you don't know, Scott has Scott True Builds on Instagram. He's also got a YouTube channel that he's got a bunch up. 
you should go follow Scott uh, on both his outlets that he's publishing to. Super, super uh, wise builder who's willing to share his mistakes as well as his successes. And that's right. what I really appreciate about you, Scott. Thank you. Appreciate that. All right, guys. Thanks for joining us out here in Bastrop, Texas. If you're not currently a subscriber, hit that subscribe button below. And by the way, we've got new content every single day of the week over on buildshownetwork.com. I've got a link below for our newsletter. Sign up for our newsletter. My team's going to send you an email on Tuesdays and Fridays to say, here's what's new on the site from all 12 of our contributors over on buildshownetwork.com. Comment below if you've got anything for Scott and I. We'll monitor the comments and, uh, and respond out on this. This is like our third video with Scott, and i got to say every time we come here, uh, I love seeing your details, Scott. Follow us on TikTok or Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.